Today we are going to get started with dependency container implementation. This is going to be a series of videos where we start implementing our own dependency container from scratch. We will write unit tests for it and also in the end we will see some use cases of the dependency container we have implemented. But in this video today we are going to start by defining what dependency container is and what problems they can solve for us. So dependency containers are essentially dictionaries that store key and value pairs. So keys are often described by protocols, meaning for a given protocol, we want to inject and register something that conforms to that protocol. So the protocols are the descriptions of our dependencies, as they often are. When we use also dependency injection, we inject them by protocols and actual implementation comes from outside. Um, we can register all sorts of things in our dependency containers. Often they are registered as single instances. So for a given protocol, we register an instance, like an object type. But we can also register closures, which we are also going to do in the next video, that uh, every time that closure is resolved, it can provide a new uh, instance of a given dependency. Okay, so this is like a high-level description of dependency containers. Um, let's take a look at some use cases. So imagine we have an application with uh, four pages. So we have a flow that page one can push page two, two can push three, and three can push four. And it, let's say we have a dependency that becomes available at page one that we need at page four. So if we go with the regular dependency injection approach, in order to provide that dependency to page four, we need to inject that dependency from page one to page two, then from two to three, and then three to four. But two and three, they don't need this dependency, so we are gonna be unnecessarily injecting them until it can reach where it's needed. So we can use dependency container in this case. When we have the dependency here at page one, we can register it inside our container and directly resolve by talking to the container from page four. So page two and three, they don't need to know about um, this dependency at all. So let's take a look at another use case for dependency containers. So let's say um, we are using networking in page one and page two, some networking service, and we want to use a single instance for it, and we are using singleton for that because we want to maybe add all these networking requests going into a queue, so we don't want to create different instances. We want to be able to control that. And usually you can create a singleton to make that work, but yeah, singletons are not ideal. They can get more complicated and maybe hard to test them as well. So in order to get rid of the singleton approach, what we can do is we can also use a dependency container. So when a project is set up, we can initialize a networking service and we can put it inside a dependency container. Then later on, both page one and page two can resolve that single instance dependency in like inside that the container that the instance is going to be the same for page one and page two why without we are using a singleton and then dependency containers can also help us with that to you know eliminate the use of singletons and you can use that approach for all sorts of dependencies of course and one other important uh, use case for dependency containers is uh, when it comes to modularization especially when you want to modularize your projects in a loosely coupled way so let's say we have a application with two pages, page A and page B, and they need to open each other, like, right? Those two different pages can present each other. And imagine we are modularizing these two pages to put in different packages. So in order to be able to open each other, they need to import each other. But this will result in circular dependency problem because those two packages are directly importing each other. As a solution, what we can do is to use uh, interface and implementation package approach. So for each package, we create actually two packages, one for interface, one for the implementation, so that the page A doesn't import page B directly anymore. It can import the page B's interface, and also page B can import page A's interface, so we get rid of the circular dependency problem. But we need to be able to, in runtime, provide these implementations for these given interfaces. And this is also done with dependency containers. Because in runtime, in dependency containers, we will be registering page A for page A interface and page B for page B interface. 
So whenever later on page A needs a page B interface, the actual implementation will be provided from the dependency container because it was registered earlier so that these two packages can be loosely coupled and we also get rid of the circular dependency problem. So for a big and modularized project, dependency containers are also a must. So yeah, if we sum up now, like the dependency containers, um, as I said, they're like dictionaries and we can register all sorts of different services in them. For example, yeah, for a key an analytics interface, we can register the analytics instance and also for networking interface, we can register networking implementation and they can be resolved later on from our different modules. Okay, so that's it for today's video. So now we have took a look at the general use cases of dependency containers. And in the next video, we are going to start building our own dependency container from scratch. We will be able to register instances and also closure type dependencies. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified when the next video is out and see you next time.